Hey, hey everybody, Z Garcia here, and today I'm taking a look at a very different little card game for two players only, cooperative, and with silent communication. This is Moving Pictures. In this game, the two players are trying to film a movie together, but you are going to do that by playing cards from your hand silently without being able to ask each other what you're holding or where you should play, and putting those uh, images that represent scenes in the movie in a specific sequence, trying to get them to line up correctly. If you manage to do that, you win the round and you go on to the next round, Act 2, a little bit harder. Manage to win that, you go on to Act 3, the hardest one of them all, and of course if you complete that one, you win the whole thing. If you don't, you don't. So there you go, let's go ahead and take a look at how the game works, I'll see you on the other side. In order to win the game, the two players need to cooperate through three acts of a movie, each one getting progressively harder. Uh, and the way to do that is to organize cards on the spots numerically, always moving up here. So during the first act, we're going to shuffle the deck, lay out six cards face down, and we've got two deleted scenes right here. Then we decide who the first player is. I'll be first, my opponent across the table, or rather my partner across the table will be second. And we each get three cards during this scene, during this act. And now we will take turns playing cards to any one of these spots. However, in this game we cannot openly communicate. So there's in fact no communication except uh, in cases where a card will allow that. So I'm going to go ahead and play a card. Um, I'm going to play this one, this scene 11, and the cards go through uh, 1 through 16. So scene 11, first of all I have to figure out where I'm going to play it. I'm thinking I might play it here. And then it has a when played ability. This one says, when played, reveal the face down card in this space. You may swap these cards and play the revealed card instead. Now, it may be too early to use the 11, but I'm going to go ahead and do that. I reveal this one. It's 15. I don't want 15, because that, that would be two spaces after 15, and the only card higher is 16. But now I know 15's there. It does say reveal it. So we both now know 15 is not in either one of our hands, right? That's useful information. And it goes to my opponent. Or Again, I keep saying that, but I mean my, my playing partner. Uh, my playing partner here has 16. So they are going to play that 16. Uh, they will play it right there. This one says, while this card is in the movie, ignore all when played effects. Again, maybe not a great time to play it just yet, but they're doing that. Then it comes back to me. I'm going to play this 13 right here. It has a when played ability that says you may swap this card with another card in the movie, but it's being ignored. So I can't do that. And I've played that card. My opponent's going to go next. Uh, they have the 10, which goes right before the 11, so they're going to go ahead and do that. And this shows an editing symbol, which we'll deal with that once we've laid all the cards out. Comes back to me. Now I'm in a bit of a pickle here. I've got scene 3. That means 1 and 2 are possibly still out there. My opponent might have one and two. And again, by opponent, I definitely don't mean that. I'm not going to certainly betray them. No, I'm not. Um, this one has a when played ability. When played, you may move another card to an empty space. It's not going to matter. So I'm going to assume they don't have the one or the two. There's a much bigger gap between three and ten. So I would do this, and then my uh, playing partner here would play that nine, which again says when played, you may move a face down card to another position. Okay, not gonna do that. Once that's done, then we go through these cards and deal with the editing ability. Uh, this one is the only one right now. It says you may swap this card with the card directly to its right. So these two could be swapped. We're not going to do that. It says you may. And then we check if in fact they are all in order. If they are, we've succeeded. And we go on to the next act in which there's going to be seven cards that need to be organized. And then during the final one, eight cards that need to be organized. However, if there was a mistake, and this had happened, and something's out of order, you can use the deleted scene cards to delete a scene. And now, 
these are fine and we've succeeded and we go on to the next one. You only have two of these though for the entire game. So you need to be mindful of when and how you use those, right? And that's pretty much the game. Get through all three using only two deleted scenes or fewer if you really want to ramp up the difficulty and you win the entire thing. Now you've already seen a decent amount of these abilities. Let me show you some of the other ones here. Uh, there's the, let me show you the editing ones, which again happen afterwards, and we can talk about those once we're done organizing the cards, then once we get to the editing part of the round, we're allowed to communicate. This one says, the number eight, you may swap this card with a non-adjacent card. <clears throat> We've got here the four, you may swap this card with a card directly to its left. We've got this one, you may rotate this card upside down if you do. Its value is 9. Very clever, very cute. And uh, this one, the number 2, you may swap this card with a higher numbered card. So again, if you play the 2 somewhere in the middle, you can then boop, switch that out. And then all the other ones let you do things like uh, this one, you may point to another card in the movie and copy its when played effect. You must play this card to an empty space directly to the left of another card. Various things like that that are going to limit and hinder you, but possibly also inform you and your opponent who you cannot openly communicate with. So there you go. That is moving pictures. Let's go back up top. That's moving pictures. So let's break it down, shall we? We're going to start with the theme and the setting. I think it's very cool. I, um, I haven't seen another game that really uses this theme, this idea of you know, lining up your shots, of storyboarding, of and, and yes, it's certainly quite abstract. It doesn't really make any sense why we can't talk. You're going to have to kind of accept that, unfortunately. You know, from that point of view, it's not the kind of theme you can use to teach the game necessarily or ingrain what's going on, but it is a very cool setting and works really well. The aesthetics, I think, are great. High-quality cards... The button shy packages here are always very neat and the card quality they use is superb. But then I also really like the look of the cards. This the storyboarded sketchy, you know, sketch look I think is is neat, very different, very cool looking um graphical design and just visual interest. Replay value is surprisingly good, I would say. Largely because of the order which the cards come up, because you cannot communicate and you have to learn how to play well, learn for things you should do and shouldn't do. Will you eventually get particularly good at the game if you play with the same person? Yeah, likely. And then it just sort of defaults to the fact that you don't know which cards they're holding, the cards you're holding aren't, there isn't a, an obvious order in which you should play them, that kind of thing. But I still consider it to be a uh, quite replayable little package. The game arc, I think, is okay. There is that um, that feeling of tension, which is interesting, you know, the, the not sure what I should play. A single mistake might be a huge mistake and end the entire thing, so there is that. And then also the idea of cyclical rounds is not something I'm a huge fan of in games. I'd rather have a game that has a beginning, middle, and end, much like the story we're trying to tell in this uh, in this game, as opposed to specific cycles that each feel very much individual from the other ones. You don't gain anything from passing the first one. You just play again at the second one. You could skip the first one. If you've played the game a lot and you are pressed for time, you could do that. Maybe you have one fewer... Um, uh, cut cut a scene card or whatever, whatever those are called. So you could do that. So there's there's nothing you're really missing out. Um, it's kind of like some of those trick-taking games in which winning the first round is one point and winning the sixth round is six points. It makes the first ones a little superfluous. It makes them feel less important. You get a little bit of that feeling in this one. The ease of play. It's a little tricky to... Well, play well, certainly, but also just understand what it is you're going for. Especially since you cannot talk, I recommend just teaching the game with maybe uh, open communication at first. Not quite showing each other your hands. But learn with open communication, 
then reset that and start the game proper. But the game is, besides that, pretty straightforward. A couple of special abilities you need to contend with shouldn't be too problematic. And then lastly, tactics, luck, strategy. Luck is going to be a big part of the game. Which cards are out, which ones you're holding versus your opponent. You might be sitting on that 15 card during the first act and think, it's super unlikely they have the 16. But they might. And then you need to be careful with that. Obviously, they should be playing that 16 pretty early, though. Um, however, because the game is the way it is, because of that communication, a big part of the gameplay is circumventing the luck with good tactics. So I find the luck of the draw here is not very problematic. The game is very much about being given a puzzle to which you see only half the pieces and then solving that puzzle together with someone else. In that, in that way, it is similar to things like Hanabi, a very popular game with, again, hidden information, limited communication, and the ability to tell each other something just at, just at the right moment and just with the right amount of leeway, right? In this one, even less than in something like Hanabi. In this one, you literally cannot say anything. But the card you play, when you play it, and where you play it, is communication itself. So that's tricky. That's subtle, and it really works. Uh, it really works well. It's a, a clever little game. So there you go. Moving Pictures is an impressive little package. Certainly not one I'm always in the mood to play. Games with no communication, cooperative games with no communication at all, are. Strange, by their very design. But this one, with the charming theme, with the clever ideas, even though it has that cyclical nature I don't love, I think stands out as a unique offering for two players. Not a lot of games like this for two players. So, this one for me is going to get a 7.5 that is a seal of approval. And it's uh, one of my favorite games from Buttonshy. There's a few others I like more, more traditional feeling games in many ways. But if you want something that is both very interesting and captivating and outside the box, then uh, Moving Pictures here is a great choice for that. So there you go, folks. That's going to do it for me. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you on the next one.